Well, thank you to everybody. I think that it's uh, it's a very nice uh, opportunity to to meet together again, despite the fatigue of the so many teleconferences that uh, are so difficult to to afford in this uh, in this month. Um, but despite this uh, this fatigue, I think that we have the opportunity today to. Uh, come to a, a, an important point of our final policy recommendation in the joint action. For those of you that don't know uh, the joint action Health Equity Europe, uh, we are now finalizing uh, our work uh, after three years of activities uh, and we are going to uh, elaborate final policy recommendations. Uh, in fact, we started uh, uh, from a specific theory of change that was uh, 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 considering the heterogeneity in the capacity of policy response across Europe uh, uh, in uh, tackling health inequalities and uh, uh, there was uh, some uh, uh, limitation in the capacity of monitoring health inequalities. So why are health inequalities our concern? Where should health inequalities be our concern? And uh, so the, 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 the weather point. Uh, uh, and uh, um, the other was what action should be done uh, to tackle health inequalities. And this, in this case also we had so many uh, heterogeneous, so much heterogeneity in our in our uh, European uh, uh, pattern. Uh, the what and finally how to make uh, these actions, these effective action, effectively uh, coming happening. And um, uh, and uh, this is the the, the how. And um, in fact, we we developed uh, uh, a very careful work by five work packages that were. Uh, um, uh, bringing all the partners uh, uh, to develop a specific actions of innovation in monitoring uh, in healthy living environment at the municipal level, in immigration, in health system, and in health in all policies, uh, both from the side of what and from the side of how. So how is governance, what is uh, effective actions. Uh, the, 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 the main uh, uh, activities that have been developed are the, the, the elaboration uh, of a policy framework for action for each of these uh, uh, of these uh, uh, work packages that was describing which is the ideal situation in policy response that I we would like to observe in Europe and uh, the country assessment that was trying to assess how far we were from this expectation from this ideal situation and from this exercise we selected actions uh, 83 actions that have been um, uh, uh, have been uh, developed and implemented in this year in 24 countries uh, assisted technically assisted by the five work package uh, 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 leaders and, uh, and, and mutual uh, assistance from the participating countries. <clears throat> now we are in the phase of uh, analysis of these uh, 83 actions and that's a very rich uh, amount of, uh, uh, of inputs uh, from this action we are trying to exploit uh, uh, the main uh, from the main results, which are the, the the learning, the main lessons that we can draw from these uh, from these activities in terms of uh, uh, of, uh, of conclusion. And uh, I, I will not uh, go through this action, but they they, they are uh, either uh, oriented to social gradient or to the uh, closing the gap. Uh, or, uh, or or to society as a whole and but, uh, given the fact that some of the work packages were strictly related to the um, uh, uh, to, 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 to focusing on the those that uh, should not be left behind so there were also a, a lot of actions oriented to group specific of vulnerable uh, groups and um, but let, let's come to the to the reason for this policy dialogue which is the most important part uh, uh, in fact we are we can anticipate a provisional final list of recommendations for from from work, from our work package that is the work package four is is or is uh, focusing on the, uh, on the fact of trying to, uh, to to demonstrate that we have been able to introduce something of really concrete in innovation in policy response in each of these uh, of these uh, domains, policy domains. And uh, in fact, uh, the, the main recommendations that are coming out are equity lens measure, 
introduce equity lens whenever and wherever possible, uh, thanks to uh, good data collection uh, covariates from the social and migration point of view, and 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 and, and make. Uh, uh, the, the equity issue accountable from the from the point of view of the of the, uh, those responsible for these policies through valid equity indicators. Then uh, uh, this should happen in uh, uh, producing uh, uh, innovations in health in all policies, uh, uh, in, in also non health non healthcare policies, uh, and uh, uh, um, in, in, in health equity promotion in. Uh, on, on the mediators of health uh, uh, impact uh, and uh, uh, in the health system, keeping the house, uh, the, our house, we, most of us are working in the health system tidy, uh, demonstrating that we are able to, to tackle health inequalities in our policy sector and, um, and, and allocating resources and actions uh, according to the need and, uh, and tailoring also intervention towards vulnerable. And finally, uh, supporting structural and practices in, from intersectoral health equity in all policies, uh, that is the, the governance part of the work, uh, partic particularly in the municipal uh, uh, super setting, umbrella setting, and, uh, and uh, providing multi-level -co coherence between national, regional, and, 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 and local level. Now we are trying to, to elaborate more on this final, uh, on this preliminary set of final conclusion, but what I would like to uh, highlight in this specific uh, introduction is the is the first point: equity lens measure whenever and wherever possible. This is one of the main conclusion, and it's exactly what this policy dialogue is about. And uh, in fact. Uh, we, we would like to recommend a systematic bench, social benchmarking, equity lens means a sort of social benchmarking of health indicators in each relevant joint of the social organization when health may be unequally influenced. This is extremely important. If we are able <clears throat> to, to convince, to persuade, to, to facilitate, to capacitate all the joints of our social organization in the healthcare system, in the municipality, uh, in the government, in the regional government, and so on, to introduce this social benchmarking of the health indicators. This is the more important, more effective way of initiating a process of audit. So the, the, the health inequalities impact assessment is the initiator of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of an audit, which is a process of change. Uh, and, uh, and of course, for this purpose, a social covariant largely available in health information and statistical system is important. And so no, no data, no problem. So the, this is another part of uh, uh, instrumental part that is behind the discussion of, uh, uh, of this uh, policy briefing that will conclude this policy dialogue. We, we have done this, uh, and I finish. So. Uh, on, on, on the pandemic because we have tried to introduce this equity lens on the pandemic and we, we in many cases in many of our countries we in the last months we, we tried to analyze how unequal was the epidemic of chronic disease where landed uh, the virus and what, how unequal was the exposure. These are all the mechanisms of, of an LTEC inequalities impact assessment that could uh, if well measured, it is well analyzed. It could initiate, could start, be the startup of of, a, of an audit, of a change. Of a, uh, in fact, if you are recognized that the exposure was unequal, is a responsibility of prevention. This inpatient pathway of care was not unequal. It's it's you you are uh, happy. It's it's not a trouble. You you will not work on hospitals to to change. Uh, the, the pathway of care, um, but if it is unequal, uh, the recovery from displacement of no COVID care, this is a specific responsibility of the physicians and of the managers of, uh, of the pathways of care that should take care of the waiting list uh, in order not to introduce, uh, not to widen inequalities and so on. So many other responsibility of any other, many other mechanisms. So this is the kind of process that we would like to initiate 
uh, with, with this, uh, with this uh, healthy, in, health inequalities impact assessment and health equity audit. And this is exactly uh, our main, uh, main uh, uh, task in this policy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Giuseppe, uh, for your uh, great uh, kickoff of this uh, policy dialogue. Uh, and uh, I would like to welcome everyone here um, to this dialogue. Um, and the majority of you are partner in the Joint Action Health Inequalities and um, uh, representing health authorities and potentially uh, actors uh, that are potentially able to take forward uh, health impact assessments or health equity audits. And uh, as uh, Giuseppe has expressed uh, the wish or the ambition to you know, to apply systematically a equity lens in all of the policies that have impact on health um, uh, is is important, uh, has, has been important uh, when we look at COVID, but will be even more important if we look at the challenges that are ahead of us, because we are living in a, quite a special time now uh, where we see uh, fast uh, 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 transitions uh, towards a more greener societies so or the green transition. We see uh, the, the, all of the digitization, so the digital transition. I mean, we will have increasingly older societies in terms of migration, demographic change. Um, so the, our society is is changing, and uh, we know that it will. This will have uh, an equal impact, and uh, that uh, will people will will suffer more and uh, therefore the time is right um, maybe to revitalize or re again highlight the the potential importance of uh, health impact assessments or health equity impact assessments uh, as an important tool instrument uh, and the purpose of this policy dialogue is to uh, discuss indeed this um, uh, how can we do that? How to raise attention for this tool? What are the challenges? What are the difficulties? How to 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 move forward uh, so that we are all clearer on on what we can do in in our countries uh, to move this uh, on, and also how we can further. Um, Know, make the recommendations from Jahi uh, in a really in a targeted or best way that, uh, that we can make them. Um, so we will have uh, two uh, sessions. The first session is uh, is full with presentations where we learn from examples uh, from Wales, Italy, and from Spain, from Valencia, uh, and also from the European Commission. And then the second part is our dialogue uh, and debate. Um, so some housekeeping rules also. So we would like to ask you to obviously mute all of your microphones. Um, for the first uh, session, uh, I would like to suggest you add your questions for clarification in the chat. So after uh, we've listened to the presenter, I can ask uh, him or her uh, some of your questions, um, but that you keep your comments for the second part of this dialogue where we more have like a, a debate and then we will use the, the raising hand feature of, of Teams if you want to, to speak. And um, please feel free to leave uh, your cameras on uh, or off, <laughs> whatever you prefer. But it is also nice to look at some of your faces. Um, so the presenters, they each have uh, uh, 15 minutes to, to present. And we have a nice uh, lineup of, uh, of various people. And uh, I would like to um, already move to, the, to introduce to you the, our first speaker, uh, Bert Savay. He is working at the DG of the Secretary General of the European Commission uh, on evaluation and impact assessment. And um, we really look forward to hear uh, the approach that the Commission is taking on impact assessments. And uh, Bert, I would like to give the floor to you. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, the invitation. Um, as as has just pointed has been pointed out by uh, Caroline, I think the uh, 
the initiative is quite timely given the fact that we are at the end hopefully of, of the COVID crisis and that we finally can start uh, to rebuild the EU, among others with uh, the recovery, recovery and resilience, uh, resilience uh, facility money. Um, and um, the, to the, 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 the session actually addresses very important topics, equity, which has been around since probably since the very first day of, of the European Commission. Um, equity is definitely one of the drivers of, of many uh, policy decisions being at very micro level, but also at a macro level. And I'm thinking here at the cohesion funds. I'm thinking here at uh, the CAP, uh, the Common Agricultural Policy. Uh, obviously, also the role of uh, the, the EU in employment has an important equity dimension, but also elements like environment and climate. Um, they 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 do look at increasingly look at the social impacts or the, both on, on the driver for taking action, but also on how um, these areas actually can affect different social groups and in, in a different way. So who are who are the winners and who are the, the potential losers of, of, of the policy? Um, but the other half of the, the talk is obviously uh, the health dimension. Uh, and this community is very much uh, in, into the health area. Um, the, the, as you, as you, you know uh, very well, health uh, was um, a rather specific area. Uh, of of the EU, where the the EU role was a supporting, uh, rather a supporting role with a, with sometimes a very technical uh, input uh, to all this, with um, maximum residue levels and and and, and so on. But uh, the COVID crisis has actually uh, slightly changed that, or has been some sort of driver to change that. And and the EU has come up now with uh, the European Health Unit. With with an, yeah and some hearts which has um, will be uh, among others an enhanced role on a number of of uh, uh, areas. Um, but apart from that, before COVID and when the Commission uh, took uh, well it was actually inaugurated, uh, the President uh, von der Leyen also announced the Europe, Europe's uh, beating cancer plan. So it was definitely health was always uh, very present in 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 say uh, the, the the previous normal and before COVID normal uh, 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 commission uh, working plan. And also when you look at uh, the, 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 the really the, uh, the the very important uh, Green Deal initiatives, um, then then this there is obviously a very clear health dimension there. And uh, we we, when you look to the list of, of of Green Deal initiatives that was presented in December 2019, then you see uh, a large number of actions on the chemical strategy and the chemical strategy obviously looks at toxicity and, and, and so on. And that's very often the driver of, of the actions. Uh, the farm to fork uh, clearly also has this health I mentioned there. There are initiatives on labeling of food, there are initiatives on sustainable pesticides. And then, it, uh, then another element is, is uh, or another area of work within the Green Deal is the zero toxic environment. Um, very prominent there is, is the air quality uh, initiatives, but that's not definitely not the only one. And then even um, when you look at climate change and climate impacts in the analysis and in the rationale, uh, the health impacts are also part of it. Um, um, when you look at climate impacts, one of the important elements there is the heat stress and uh, or zoonos uh, diseases that come with uh, with uh, new species of, of mosquitoes or so. Um, so I think um, health is well, actually the, the point I want to make is that health is is goes well beyond uh, the, the area of say DG Santé. Uh, and 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 apart from COVID, is is a key uh, con consideration of 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 EU policies. So myself, I'm uh, I'm working for the uh, unit that on on bad regulation uh, that is is overlooking the the impact assessments uh, and and the evaluations of the uh, and the evaluation of the Commission. And bad regulation is is actually the whole set of activities that that allows for better lawmaking. So a more efficient one, more effective, uh, more equitable uh, uh, lawmaking. And that's actually a shared objective, not just by the Commission, but that's a shared objective by uh, by all institutions, by, by the European Parliament, by the European Council. 
um, and, and there are increasingly um, interactions between the three institutions in order to make the better regulation agenda uh, perform even better. I, I have to say that um, the OECD actually ranks uh, the, the EU as among the really the very, very top of, of, of bad regulation. So we, we, we as, a, as EU have a long tradition. That's not something that popped up last year whatsoever, but that's that's that goes probably at least two decades back and maybe longer. Um, and um, as, as, a, as an effect, um, the bad regulation agenda has is constantly improving. And now in April, um, there has been a new communication published that actually uh, foresees uh, gradual improvements, uh, building on, on, on the rather good uh, foundation, but gradual improvements of the bad regulation processes in, uh, four, in five areas. Uh, one is on uh, the consultation of the stakeholders. It's very important to have a clear understanding what uh, the stakeholders on in all different forms and formats um, uh, think about an issue, uh, what the angle is, what the bottlenecks are, what according to them the, the opportunities and possibilities are for a solution. Uh, and here there is some more, more specifically in the consultation process, there will be a kind of an um a, a, a kind of uh, of bring together different consultation steps in order to to uh, to avoid the con consultation fatigue yeah? because we can you can consult but you also have to measure a little bit uh, you have to do this proportionally um uh, also uh, some technical files i think we we will opt rather for targeted consultations and and probably some of the health uh issues fall rather on under a targeted consultation or are rather technical sometimes very much technical um and then um and a second element is actually the the constant fight again against uh unnecessary costs and burden uh, this is something that 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 i think any government or any policy process needs to keep uh, keep an eye on uh, and has been a number of of of, of methods uh, processes uh, being set up in order to to address that even better uh, a third element is transparency so uh, there is a clear commitment that all underlying data studies impact assessments are readily available and can be accessed in order to uh underpin actually uh, why how the analysis was made and 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 uh, uh what actually the basis was for this analysis um and then there are very two elements that are um uh, link actually directly to this workshop and that that i i saw across the the policy documents uh, one is foresight and the foresight is uh, is is actually the, the the element that that we we need to to be future proof. We need to look not just to to the end of this policy cycle, uh, but we need to look far in 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 the future and beyond ten years, beyond twenty years, in order to see whether existing policies or new policy areas uh and the design how we how we go about it are, are actually fit for the future yeah? Th that we that we actually can anticipate any opportunities but also any risks uh in the future um and actually this foresight is something that should that should be mainstreamed across the policy cycle it's not one-off thing it's something really it's a kind of an uh a working attitude and 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 a set of mind uh, to 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 take this this long term view into consideration, um, and then uh, another element that is highly important for for this uh, community is the fact that um, evidence has been uh, very much the basis of of a lot of uh, all impact assessment and 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 all key. Um, initiatives have been supported by by impact assessment by evidence but uh it's clearly the ambition of this commission and the the, the, the president and the commissioners have made a lot of uh, on various occasions uh uh co publicly commitments about that is that they want to bring the impacts more visible not just uh better analyzed but also more visible and one of the tools or the key compass are the sustainable development goals uh, and, and for this community, I'm particularly thinking of SDG 3, which is uh, the good health and well-being, and it, SDG 10, uh, which is about reduced inequalities. So there is a whole process in order to, to embed the SDGs into 
the policy cycle and particularly in 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 the impact assessment and evaluations so i i mentioned already the word impact assessment a couple of times um, it's together with evaluations uh, two key tools of the bed regulation these are reports with a lot of data with a lot of uh, analysis with a lot of rational uh, to to substantiate the decisions or the pending decisions uh, uh, that are being made. Um, the role of them, and I will focus on impact assessment. So the evaluations look back are ex post uh, of, of a previous cycle, looking whether actually the policy did what it was supposed to do and whether it's still fit for purpose. Uh, and then the conclusions and the lessons learned there lead then to uh, often to new initiatives, new proposals, which are then accompanied by impact assessments. Um, impact assessments are, are are made are done for all important, all significant, well, all important uh, initiatives and at least all initiatives with significant impacts in three areas: the economic, the social, and the environment. And now you can say, well, we don't see health. Well, actually, health is everywhere. Health is on the social side, health is on, on, on the environmental side. Uh, we just uh, already touched upon that. Um, and um, important there is that actually these impact assessments, as, as the, at, at least in, at, the, at the Commission, are actually holistic impact assessment. It's not a thematic impact assessment, as I, as I have seen in the policy document, which is in your case, the health impact assessment. Um, so there are also a clear identification of possible trade-offs between different impact areas. So these are highlighted. Um, um, they, so they, 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 they look at uh, not just at these three big pillars, envi environment, social and, and economic, but they also look at who is, who is affected as a means. Are they, how, how are they affected, but also increasingly on the social impacts and where and if avail if data allows to do the analysis to uh, well, obviously, wh which countries or are countries affected in the same way, but also which income groups are affected uh, in, in what way. Uh, but that's very much uh, uh, that's very much constrained by the available data uh, and timing sometimes. Um, these impact assessments are published when uh, the proposals are adopted by the Commission and when they go to uh, the Parliament and the Council. And actually, these impact assessments are very often the basis on which uh, the discussions uh, in the Parliament and Council are, are being done. So they are really a very important tool in, 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 in the um, policy process. And um, obviously the question then is how do you assure the quality of the, of the impact assessments? Well, for this we have the Regulatory Scrutiny Board, uh, which is an independent body um, within the Commission, with internal and external experts. Uh, that actually really crit very critically scrutinize uh, the impact assessments and for any policy DG, for any desk officer, this is a, absolutely an important milestone in the policy process in order to pass it because the, the board can issue a positive or a negative opinion. Um, so, um, well, I think uh, I think I cannot stress enough that these impact assessments are holistic, so are, they're, they're across the board, so they're not thematic. Um, that I do think that helps the policy process very much, um, and that um, well, the, the 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 health issues go beyond uh, the initiatives of DG Santé. Uh, when you look to DG Environment, uh, I, I, when I think about proposals with very important health assessment, um, I, I recall uh, the air quality impact assessments of 2013, which obviously had a very important uh, section on, on particularly uh, respiratory and cardiac uh, um, uh, diseases. Also the climate um, proposals very often have that have, have this health dimension. Uh, I'm thinking of the climate target plan of last year, uh, also DG employment when they address uh, uh, um, the working hours or the working conditions. This, this has important health uh, dimensions. And then um, it's a very, um, um, yeah, health is pretty scientific, very technical uh, area. So um, the Commission relies obviously on the experts of, say, uh, DG Santé, DG Environment, also the Joint Research Center, and also has then uh, contracts with ex external uh, consultants. Um, 
and in these impact assessments, we deal with issues like uh, risk management, those response functions, uh, values of life. But also I would like to mention uh, the role of, for example, the GRC, uh, the Joint Research Center uh, scientists in uh, the global burden of disease activity, uh, which, which actually looks on a global scale to the main uh, diseases, including uh, dimensions as age and gender, but also they look to diseases in less developed uh, countries, which is probably mm -hmm. another dimension of health equity, uh, slightly mm -hmm. beyond this 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 area, but um, um, maybe a good topic for for another policy discussion. So I think I will uh, conclude here. Um, thanks a lot. I, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Bert. It's a wealth of information and I have already many questions, uh, but I think we have to wait until the discussion time. But I appreciate it uh, very much also that you highlight the foresight uh, methodology um, as a way to do a, an impact assessment looking in the future to really predict, OK, this may happen and with these kind of policies that will have that impact and and then can anticipate and, and that information is valuable for design of uh, uh, of policy. So that's interesting uh, addition that uh, that we can think of. And also your, the case that you're making for holistic impact assessments rather than have it specifically on health or even health equity, which is, I think, an important area for discussion later on. And I now I had questions, but maybe we can tackle that in the discussion about a bit about how, because I can imagine that you are collecting a wealth of information from all these stakeholders. And I know your health net, we participate in impact assessment. We do give you a lot of information on how we think some of the European Union policies are impacting on, on health equity. And you have to go through all these responses and go into the data and the literature. And, and I wonder, how do you do that so with how many people are you doing that how much time does it take and how and how do you indeed uh, uh, balance the, the 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 input the evidence that you receive i mean uh, i know industry will come up with their evidences and 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 what do you then put forward in your recommendation that goes to the parliament and the council i mean will you make then a summary and uh, i can imagine that it is quite uh, tricky uh, or complicated to assess what what to take on or what not um yeah so but we do not have the time now to go into debate but i thought i park these questions with you and then after uh, all the presentations we can go more into depth into the on into these uh, issues so thanks again uh, Bert. And uh, I would uh, now like to um, welcome uh, Cathy Wetherup. Um, she is a strategic lead for health and sustainability of public health Wales and working for the um, Welsh uh, government. And Cathy, uh, uh, I know in Wales uh, you're doing many great things there um, and I would like to give you the floor. Thank you very much, Caroline, and um, thank you very much for inviting me um, to present today. Um, it's a real honour because um, I've obviously been involved in the JAHI um, this time round and was involved in the previous JAHI, and um, it's been an excellent uh, opportunity to continue to kind of raise this agenda at a number of levels, but particularly um, in Welsh Government. And it's really helped us, I think, to embed a very long standing interest and commitment to health in all policies and health inequalities, because it's helped us lead um, work under the Public Health Act to make Wales one of the first countries in the world to place health impact, health impact assessments on a statutory footing. Um, so we will be introducing regulations that make health impact assessment compulsory for all public bodies uh, in certain circumstances. Now, unfortunately, this, the detailed work on this has been temporarily paused um, due to COVID, but Welsh Go Government um, are picking up this agenda again and have a commitment, as I say, to develop these regulations. So I know my colleagues um, from the Welsh Health Impact Assessment Unit would be um, 
very well placed to discuss the detail of health impact assessments with you today. Um, I know that they've provided you with a case study about how um, health impact assessment and health equity impact assessment is being um, promoted and, and rolled out in Wales. Um, but today I thought I'd give a slightly different perspective uh, just to tell you about how um, impact assessments are being used for the, the ambition of our unique sustainable development legislation, the Wellbeing Future Generations Act. So I know many of you um, through uh, Wales's participation in JAHI are aware of our legislation. But just for some of those of you that don't, um, this was introduced in 2015 and our Wellbeing of Future Generations Act really tries to help us um, be more systemic in our thinking, planning and decision making. So the Act commits um, government and 43 public bodies to delivering against seven ambitious um, wellbeing goals. And these are designed to improve the wellbeing of the whole country. So we've got goals that um, talk about um, national well-being, uh, a healthier Wales, a more equal Wales, and other goals focusing on the environment, the economy and culture. And not only do um, are all public services uh, required to contribute to those goals, they're also required to work in a particular way. So the Act also commits us to working, it puts in place the sustainable development principle and we have five ways of working describing how we should be operating. So these include working in an integrated way across services, focusing on prevention, um, we have to collaborate with others, we have to involve the public and we always have to balance um, the short term needs with a longer term perspective. So the Act um, provides government and all sectors with an enabling framework, which is really trying to promote collective responsibility and uh, better align all our work to a common set of outcomes. So this is important background information uh, because Welsh Government needed to put in place an approach to impact assessment, which would really avoid silo working and help us to put um, the ambition into place, into the way we're delivering and the way we're um, delivering our policies, developing and delivering our policies. So we have to think laterally across the seven goals when developing the policy. We have to consider the potential impacts and long term consequences of policy on a wider set of parameters, not just on health or environment or equality. Uh, we have to look to prevent problems occurring or getting worse. We have to work collabor collaboratively with a wide range of colleagues and stakeholders and involve people either that are directly affected or indirectly affected by our policy. And we have to make the connections between the social, economic, environmental and cultural challenges. So we integrate our planning and delivery with other pol policy areas. So we achieve a maximum good effect. And the other thing that um, you'll be aware, um, certainly government colleagues will be aware, but officials and civil servants uh, as part of their training are introduced to the policy cycle. And that has five stages. So impact assessments can be used each stage. Um, so for the case for change, you know, a very important um, part of the policy process, impact assessment helps identify the different facets of the issue, um, to spot the connections with other areas of work and to define the purpose uh, in line with that government strategy. Um, in terms of the options, impact assessment helps uh, determine how each option would affect different people, uh, the environment, the economy, culture, but helps give um, full and balanced advice to ministers. And then developing the preferred option, impact assessment uh, identifies the detailed delivery issues that need to be resolved before proceeding further. And implementation, if the impact assessment has been done properly at the right stage, it will help determine the delivery approach that's needed um, or that should be avoided to remedy or mitigate some of uh, potential adverse effects. And evaluation, a really important uh, part of the policy cycle. Um, impact assessment developed at the outset of the policy 
will help to ensure that the evidence um, that's needed for evaluation is identified rather than being too late in the process. So in order to do this, um, and certainly in response to the Wellbeing for Future Generations Act, Welsh Government has developed uh, an integrated impact assessment tool. And this effectively is a tool that brings together a sort of compendium of different impact assessments. Uh, officials have to, when they're considering any kind of uh, new policy, officials have to use an integrated impact assessment template which automatically um, scopes out the uh, degree of the, the cross portfolio thinking that's required. And it links um, the policy owner uh, to all the colleagues across the organisation who would have expert knowledge across the portfolio. Or sometimes some of those colleagues have responsibility for a statutory impact assessment, for example, health impact assessment or environmental impact assessment and so on. And then as well as uh, a written template that has to be uh, recorded and go through certain procedures, colleagues are encouraged to discuss, um, discuss these cross-cutting issues through what's called a policy gateway process. And I think this is probably the most, uh, one of the most valuable uh, opportunities where colleagues come together and discuss um, how the policy kind of works across uh, different portfolio areas. So this process has been in place since July 2018. Um, content is kept under review because obviously that integrated impact assessment needs to keep uh, up to date with any new legislation or policy commitments. So recently um, questions on the uh, impact assessment have included questions which relate to socio-economic impact because government introduced a socio-economic duty in Wales. And this is part of a continuous approach. Um, so colleagues who have responsibility for that integra integrated impact assessment um, have, have informed me that they are trying to develop this to kind of become best pr practice in policy making. And they currently looking at um, the evidence of the pilot so far and how that they can develop and improve the in integrated impact assessment by building on both the, the current tool and its experience use. So some of the initial changes that they're going to make are um, looking at improving the format of the tool, looking at the guidance that accompanies the tool and focusing on how and when impact assessment is used because um, they're very aware that uh, the timing of when that impact assessment is undertaken is probably the most valuable uh, learning from all of this. Um, and then there'll be some uh, short changes made to improve usability. So we use, we get really the best out of the system we've got. Um, training is a vital part of the use and um, the policymakers now have uh, this module on using and assessing impact as part of their um, policy development training. But I think the, the other thing that Welsh Government is aware of is we need to think more broadly about how we harness the organisational expertise to support those carrying out the impact assessment. So they may be uh, familiar with their own policy, but not necessarily the detail of the other um, policy areas. So it's really about building on that, um, as I say, the policy gateway process to think about, you know, what are the other opportunities where we can share the learning across the different portfolios to make um, to make the a sort of better understanding of, you know, how we need to kind of collaborate and work across portfolio areas. So we develop policies that have the greatest impact um, and the least amount of detrimental impact as possible. So I think that just gives you a um, an insight into what's being done to take forward the legislation so that we have um, a tool that better reflects the kind of central tenant of the ambition in, in Welsh legislation around sustainable development. 
Thanks a lot, uh, Cathy. Um, really very interesting. And I think we all know the, this beautiful act on the well-being of future generations. And, <laughs> and I think many countries will think, hmm, would be good to have a similar act or uh, uh, having a similar uh, cross-sector approach, uh, an overarching approach for, for government, in which indeed the integrated impact assessment uh, fits. It's a logical consequence. And uh, it's interesting how you set out the policy gateway process and and how that's your, your sort of that's being a coordinated process. And again, I have questions about the details. So how does that then work in practice and whether how you consult with external stakeholders uh, as part of that process and um, uh, and whether you have an example of of how outcomes of uh, that process have led to a change in policy indeed of how it is then being taken up is it then also presented to parliament like at the European example or so questions for later on uh, thanks Cathy and um, I would now like to suggest we move to Italy and uh, I would like to give the floor to Stefania Vasselli uh, she's the NCD Prevention Senior uh, Medical uh, Officer at the Ministry of Health in Italy. Mm, yes. Stefania. Good morning and thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Uh, I'm Stefania Vasselli, I work in uh, Ministry of Health and I'm involved in uh, coordinating the coordination of National Prevention Plan. So my relation is about the National Prevention Plan. I have some slides. Um, I read and I apologize for my slides are full of text, but it is easier for me reading them. Uh, so I try to share. My co our colleague can also upload the presentation if you prefer. Um, uh, do you um, look at them? Yes, we see it now. You just have to put it in presentation mode. Is yes, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I start uh, from a, a definition uh, that we know, um, but it is important to remember. Uh, health inequality describes uh, the differences in health experience and health outcomes between different population groups according to socioeconomic status, geographical area, age, disability, gender or acting group. And health inequity describes the differences in opportunity for different population groups which result in unequal life chances, access to health services, uh, exposure to risk factor and so on. Uh, this can lead to health inequalities. And uh, um, I um, want to remember uh, the framework uh, in which we are. Uh, that is, uh, a thought that it is, uh, in health is influenced by factors that are uh, much broader than the healthcare system. The health system does make a difference and does have a role in addressing inequities. So we talk about health inequities. Um, and uh, reducing health inequities was uh, an issue of national prevention plans, of all national prevention plans. Uh, however, uh, attention to this problem appeared to be minimal in uh, 2005 2012 uh, national prevention plans, since uh, only a minority of regional prevention plans uh, prioritized the, the need to reduce uh, health inequities. And, uh, very few projects contain action uh, specifically targeting uh, these uh, goals. But 2014-2018 uh, NPP was uh, uh, included uh, the fight against uh, uh, health inequities in the vision and uh, in the mission of prevention. So for the first time, a national planning act proposes the reduction of health inequities as a principle, uh, a guiding principle and as a, an evaluation criterion. But the new uh, NPP 2020-2025 confirms uh, this, um, this issue and uh, um, um, as a uh, priority, transversal priority to all the objectives of uh, the NPP, 
which uh, requires a true disclosure of uh, scientific uh, data, validated methods and tools uh, to guarantee uh, equity in uh, the action. And then, uh, uh, and this is very important, uh, uh, national prevention plan uh, um, helps uh, to ensure that the essential levels uh, of care that we uh, call LEA are implemented in all regions so that each regional health service is accountable to deliver the LEA due to every person in Italy, irrespective of the social position or other social demographic condition. This is the framework of National Prevention Plan. That is a, a programmatic document adopted by agreement between the, level, the central level state, Minister of Health and the regions. So there are national goals, regional plans, and uh, the so-called uh, central action supporting uh, regional plans and uh, uh, this uh, traduced in, into actions uh, sharing uh, uh, principle objectives uh, methodologies and tools uh, monitoring uh, and evaluation by central level and stewardship uh, as uh, the model uh, the best model of uh, governance and so uh, the uh, um, now, MPP uh, has this vision. Um, it is based on one health approach consistent with the uh, United Nations 2030 agenda and the National Strategy for Sustainable Development, health and policies framework, wall of government and wall of society approach, multi level governance operation based on the integration of national, regional, and the local policies person-centered approach, uh, empowerment, health literacy and engagement, implementation of a programs and action supported by evidence of effectiveness, equity and sustainability, a use of health related data for monitoring and evaluation, and PP impact both in processes and outcomes. But there are some innovations because uh, the uh, limited uh, visibility and poor application of a layer of uh, prevention to regional and local policy planning and program is a problem, a serious problem. So MPP has a, a solution uh, that is introducing the so-called regional predefined programs, which have the same characteristic for all the regions, are binding, all regions are required to implement them, are monitored through predefined and common indicators for all regions, need the collaboration and networking among different sectors to be implemented, they are based on evidence on cost effectiveness and equity or good practices as the best criteria for selective priority problems and intervention, and adopt setting approach as the best strategy and governance model. And uh, um, another important innovation is that uh, the 2020-2025 uh, MPP is aimed to direct the health and the policy approach towards greater equity in prevention and health promotion. And it means that the equity lens are required and intersector action and governance of public health. Um, measure inequalities of exposure, vulnerability and effect, uh, differentiating the quantity and destination of interventions in proportion to the observed inequalities, and adjusting the current design of the interventions, adopting an operational methodology to guide the choices, resourcing and actions uh, for an equity-oriented approach from national to local level. And another important innovation is uh, capacity building. That is a precondition of a successful uh, tackle uh, um, health inequities. It's the first step intended as uh, any action aimed to develop resources, skills, organizational structures that are needed to implement effective health promotion activities. And so two projects financed by the Ministry of Health and coordinated by National Health Institute have supported the central and regional level in order to consolidate the introduction of the equity lenses approach in the to last uh, MPPs by promotion, promoting the health equity oriented approach in pri priority and target setting, choice of strategy, monitoring and evaluation system, investing capacity building process for regional officers responsible 
responsible of the elaboration and implementation of the RPP in each Italian region and developing and disseminating through face-to-face -face training modules and web community of practice support tools that provide equity-oriented practices across the country. And finally, applying a common and validated methodology, health equity audit, to guarantee at least a minimum common base uh, achievement that is declined in specific uh, regional context. And so we uh, introduce uh, AIA, that is a cyclical uh, process, and uh, we know that it uh, determines uh, whether the distribution of health outcomes, health care, or health determinant is uh, inequitable or are related to the needs so that action can be taken to remedy and monitor progress. And uh, it is aimed to um, incorporate these lens in uh, current policy and, uh, and practice, and so to assist uh, the planning and decision-making process of organization toward equity. Generally, uh, for once, a program or policy has already been implemented, or also for a new program by systematically checking the presence of health uh, inequities, identifying prevention and contrast actions, and, and then evaluating their impact. Uh, we know that uh, AI is a cycle process, uh, so uh, it uh, has stages that are agree priorities and partners, uh, do an equity profile, uh, identify the gaps, uh, uh, identify effective local action to tackle inequalities, agree local target priorities with the partners, and review progress and impacts against the target. Uh, this uh, uh, implies uh, questions. Uh, the first is uh, what is the problem and uh, uh, which are the stakeholders involved, how to identify the problem and confirm the presence of health inequity by data, which is the selected action to implement, uh, exploring evidence-based literature and uh, so determining actions, which impact uh, in relation to different dimensions, uh, relevance, efficiency, effectiveness, outcome and sustainability. And how then to continue or to, to change, so evaluate and reflect to begin again, uh, how to share results with partners, how to communicate to target and to population. And um, NPP um, so, um, call, calls AIA because in uh, regional plans, AIA is uh, the prerequisite of regional planning, uh, aimed to ensure that uh, regions promote uh, an health equity oriented approach at the regional and local level in all their strategy, programs, priority, and target setting. And it is one of the criteria for evaluating and approving uh, the regional proposal by the Ministry of Health. And it is a part of those regional goals which need to be addressed in order to have access to the resources being the restraint for prevention, so that the region, regions should be accountable for an appropriate set of equity indicators uh, in relation to process and uh, impact. Um, we know that uh, EA is more successful if uh, it is focused on setting based programs. Uh, considered uh, where people uh, spend uh, most of their time, so workplaces, school, health services, communities, uh, because uh, it is easier to consult the local policy makers and to involve them so that they create uh, a promote a healthy and inclusive environment. It is successful if it adopts a life course perspective and a gender responsive approach, investing in parent skills and early childhood education, striving to facilitate the highest attainable level of health and well-being for women and men across the life course, and to address gender-based health inequities. If it is based on the whole government and whole of society approaches, ultimate policies, using intersectoral collaboration and including uh, social economic inequities uh, and their consequences for health and well-being uh, and to identify entry points of intervention solution. 
and if uh, it intends to impact uh, on the system, not only on intervention, but on the system, uh, analyzing organizational and governance mechanism underlying possible inequalities and developing comprehensive and integrated strategies, not only some spot actions, but comprehensive strategies to remove inequities. And it is more successful is it if it provides a window opportunity for carrying out a sustainable intervention. Um, not uh, new, but re-engineering with the equity lens of what is already in place and integrated uh, in institutional and current activities, uh, possibly without additional resources. Uh, if it incorporates a robust and flexible monitoring and evaluation process to generate evidence on which works best and produces effects, and if it supports data collection, this is very important, data collection of social determinants, um, enhancing use of uh, existing population surveillance systems like uh, uh, behavior risk uh, surveillance system, behavior risk factor surveillance system, FASI, FASI d'Argento in Italy, which already provide this aggregation of health indicators across relevant social groups, but also underline the need to collect a social covariate at individual level in each health information system at local, regional and national level. And since uh, having good data on uh, health inequities is uh, important in developing uh, strategies to address them, regions uh, in uh, regional uh, prevention plans are required to define the health and equity profile for each program using all available data in integrated way uh, in order to support planning, but also to, uh, to uh, facilitate uh, um, health and equity profile is a facilitator for uh, political commitment, to find the resources, uh, intersectoral approach, uh, engagement of stakeholders, empowerment of population, and advocacy of health system for identification of common health and equity goals. So uh, health and equity profile with this double role is a part of a layer is uh, uh, recognized as a, an essential level of care, like a, a health uh, intervention. So uh, I conclude saying that uh, 2020, 2025 uh, uh, MPP gives a direction to the effort of implementing and evaluating LEA, which by definition are a guarantee of equity. Regional predefined programs may help to convert LEA in action whose impact on health and health inequities can be measured. In these programs, health equity audit is applied and documented as a cultural, strategic, organizational, and operational participatory approach that easily meets the contextual needs of the different stakeholders involved and may be modified to effectively address equity. And, uh, we have to remember that the results should directly influence the program service by incorporating uh, health equity finding into their everyday work and continuing to make improvement in achieving health uh, equity. So thank you very much for uh, the kind of attention. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Thank Stefania. Stefania, for your excellent yeah, presentation. presentation. And, and, um, uh, I hear yeah. echo. Okay. Yeah, this is better. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it's and I also would like to congratulate you and the ministry for setting up such a great system to get regions to really take up the equity lens and try to design and implement uh, policies and activities that can actually help to reduce health inequality. So really very nice. Also the, the efforts on capacity building and training that, uh, that you also uh, have set up uh, so that everyone can use this, uh, can use the tools and the methodology. Again, uh, I have lots of questions and uh, in particular questions about, um, I mean, uh, how, what are so far your lessons learned? How are things going? Because I don't know how new this plan is. Your plan is from 2020 to 2025. So this is a, a super system that you have set up. Are people already starting to work on it? Are capacity trainings 
already happening. Um, so these are my questions for the dis discussion, but I also learned that you may need to leave uh, shortly, no? Or are you able to stay a little bit longer for the discussion? You have to unmute yourself. Can you, and you, I can't hear you, so you have to unmute, unmute. Uh, I can stay uh, a bit longer. There is uh, my colleague that is following the uh, other meeting, so I will stay. For, OK, um, super. So maybe for the discussion, we can uh, again dive a bit into, OK, how are uh, people in the regions taking up these plans and how are things and, and how uh, can you make sure that they are actually applying the lens and is there a reporting back system um, like we've heard in Wales and so on. OK, now uh, we are moving from uh, Wales, Italy to Spain, uh, to Valencia, and I'm very pleased uh, to have with us Rosanna Pero Perez. She's working for the Director General for Public Health uh, in the region of Valencia, and she also has a PowerPoint uh, that we will share for you. Bania is, uh, is going to share the PowerPoint. Yeah. OK. Okay, uh, good morning. Thank you for inviting us to, to um, tell us our work during uh, YAHI and also the context where the activities in YAHI is introduced in our framework. Um, this is a, a work that was made mainly in, the, in our Office of Health Equity Impact Assessment. Uh, and uh, we work uh, close together because we work mainly with uh, municipalities. Please, uh, next slide. Our regulatory framework is the National Public Health Act that was from 2011. Uh, when you can see that the public administration must undergo to a health impact assessment. Also in the autonom our region, that is Valencian community, we have the Valencian Health Act in uh, 2014 uh, that uh, one of the articles say that norms, plans, programs or projects must be submitted to the previous evaluation of the impact on health. And finally, our fourth health plan that was from 2016-2020, uh, uh, but now is extended to for this year. The, the name of the health plan is Health in All Age and Health in All Policies. And uh, I think it's important to say that was approved not for the, no, it was approved only for the Department of Health. It's a commitment of the Valencian government that uh, is the responsibility of the, all the departments of the government to uh, take in account. Uh, please, uh, next slide. The, uh, the health plan have five strategic lines and uh, this uh, work that we are going to present will be uh, it, well, is in the la strategic line three, strength, equity and gender equality, reduce inequalities in health and promote participation. And the, in a strategic line five, that is promote health in all life settings. Next slide. Uh, as uh, following the health plan, we develop Sarcha Salud, that is a healthy public uh, policy to promote local actions in the municipalities. The objective is uh, that mainly that the uh, uh, municipalities understand that uh, health is a matter of determinants of health, not is a, only a care services. Um, what, another objective is to promote organizational changes in, in order to increase the municipality's commitment with the community participation, the intersectoriality and the equity perspective in all decision making policy development and also to compromise uh, with uh, municipalities with this organizational change that we call a social innovation in health that aim to improve health in their communities. 
at this moment we have uh, 240 municipalities, that is uh, near 70% of the total population of our region, and also to give support this, uh, this commitment that you can see that is the, the five steps that the municipalities have to learn how to make this, their initiatives. We have 21 public health centers distributed in the territory that help us and municipalities to go ahead with this. Please, next slide. Uh, we developed some instruments in order to uh, support municipalities in these commitments. And uh, one of the developed is a gu guides, guides for different tools, uh, procedure to work community action for health from the municipalities in five states, health concepts to listen and understand us, a selected set of participatory methodologies or community actions in health, what are linked to the four health plan and is what are the, the, um, the more uh, evidence initiatives in childhood, jobs, education, healthy work at local level. Please, next slide. And uh, in this um, umbrella of Yahi, we uh, support the idea to develop a methodology for health equity impact assessment at local level to help uh, uh, municipalities to do it. Next slide. Uh, uh, following the, um, our Health Act in uh, 20. Uh, 14, there is a, another law we call Decret uh, that establishes the intersectorial committee. And uh, with this uh, law, we develop the Fem Salud, uh, we call Catalan, and is it Catalan? That is the, the, um, the our health equity impact ass assessment at regional level. And uh, the work we uh, we are I'm going to present is the adaptation for this tool uh, that is the 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 tool you all uh, we are using around Europe uh, to uh, local level. Um, please next slide. Uh, what are the methodology for this adaptation? First, we made a bibliography re uh, review. Uh, looking for another experience of this adaptation at the local level. Uh, we built a draft, an, a draft that was a checklist based in the FEM Salud, that is the HIAP, uh, usual HIAP, incorpora incorporating relevant aspects. And this first draft was reviewed by a group of experts that are uh, from public health professionals and also municipal uh, technical staff from different kind of areas. Uh, next slide. slide. The second step in this uh, adaptation was to uh, 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 make some pilot studies in order to see if this adaptation we made is uh, running well. For this, we uh, identify six municipalities that was that have had an initiative in discuss, discussion or a drive phase, and uh, preferably from the areas of urban planning or environment. We ap apply the tool to these initiatives, uh, doing two kind of things. <clears throat> First, a, select, a, de, a description of these initiatives and the populations that can be affected. And uh, the second uh, 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 step was to analyze the potential impacts of these initiatives on the determinants of health and their distribution in the social population groups. And uh, for this step, uh, we use workshops in each municipality with, with two kind of people, technical staff and re, uh, citizen representatives. And the, the third step was to report the process. 
Next slide. This is the, the titles of the projects that we use for test this uh, adaptation of the HIAP at local level, uh, healthy parks, sustainable urban mobility plan, urban and interurban pedestrian cycle lane, alternative leisure activities, recovery of socialization spaces for young people, or growing projects. Uh, next slide. Uh, thanks. Uh, this is a um, um, images of how we made the workshop with the technical st staff and citizens perspective. First was was made by uh, participatory dynamics, uh, was doing a presentation of the workshop, uh, and one part of the activity was to let's speak a common language. What is health? What are determinants of health? Uh, and uh, uh, the second part of the workshop is with this information we have now, how uh, will be the health impacts and the recommendations we can do for this initiative. Uh, we can see here some photos <laughs> of these uh, workshops. Uh, next slide. Um, and the adaptation that we made uh, after these uh, workshops with citizens and uh, municipal uh, technicians are changes in the terminology of language that the regional tool uh, use, uh, doing more comprehensive language for people. And also we include uh, some uh, questions in order uh, the people have ideas about health and health equity, because if no, it was difficult for citizens to think in, uh, in the, their impacts. And here there are some uh, examples, no? for example, um, the, the areas are good street uh, connectivity for walking, cycling, public transport, but also for uh, disability persons and this kind of things. And we include all these examples in uh, in this uh, in the uh, in the uh, tool. Next slide, please. The second uh, adaptation uh, was changes in the which in the way in which the tool must be managed. Uh, for example, the usual uh, tool are mainly a checklist, but here uh, we think that with conversational, conversational groups with the community are more effective in order that to uh, get uh, to, uh, uh, to know their um, feelings about the impacts of different groups more that the people work alone doing the checklist. Uh, and the third was uh, we include uh, the equity approach supporting questions, specifically questions about equity. Uh, for example, uh, for people with uh, functional diversity, the removal of architectural barriers, or adaptation of housing to a specific needs for older people. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the result of all this process is that we uh, uh, change a little bit the methodology to implement the health impact assessment with equity lens at the local level. And we call uh, decide or decide in Spanish, that is describe the situation, the initiative, extract the main determinants of health, co-produce with technicals and citizens, what are the impacts, integrate these results in the initiative, disseminate this uh, process and uh, evaluate if this process have impact in changing this some uh, 
things in the initiative. And now we um, uh, are finalizing the guide that is in the same uh, same uh, mark, mark uh, design that all the guides we are doing in our work with the municipalities and is the guide is how to analyze the impact on health and on equity or in municipal initiatives. The next slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, 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 what 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 are the things we are doing to promote this instrument, new instrument in the municipalities is that we present this guide in the annual Church of Salud meeting that was uh, three weeks ago and with more than 260 participants, uh, politicians, uh, community associations, municipal technicians, public health uh, practitioners, but people also from primary health care that are working with uh, municipalities. Uh, we are doing also training to public health services and municipalities, not all the, the public health services because there are people from public health services that is that join to develop this, join the group to develop the guide, but it's more difficult for the technicians in the municipalities but also the politicians and community associations. And also uh, we uh, every year have different kind of funds to address the municipalities that are working in this municipalities for health network that we call uh, Church of Salud. We have three kind of uh, funds. One addressed directly to vulnerable population another address to develop the Church of Salud uh, uh, as a uh, gradient, uh, all, always taking in account equity, but uh, more related with a whole the, the population. And in this fund, well, we have also funds to the community associations in order to collaborate in the building uh, more um, healthy um, uh, settings. And this uh, this year, uh, the funds are include uh, the, the use, uh, use this methodology at municipal level and we have some funds to to help uh, uh, municipalities. The last uh, uh, thank you uh, and I hope uh, uh, you liked our presentation and our work. Many thanks. Thanks, uh, Osana. It's, uh, we certainly like your presentation. It's very clear and a great example of how you are getting municipalities, people on the ground, applying health impact assessments, which is uh, probably a bit of a different approach, but more tangible, no? because you can directly uh, relate with the citizens. And uh, I love the acronym, the DECIDE or the DECIDE <laughs> is very nice, uh, very recognizable and nice how you shuffle the methodology uh, and, and put also the conversational groups more upfront and that you came to the conclusion that equity needed to be strengthened. And that is a, a concern I have a bit with uh, a generic impact assessments or holistic impact assessments, you know, that that again may risk uh, that we lose focus on, on equity. Um, so thanks, yes. Rosanna. I, uh, I would uh, now actually like to open the floor for overall discussions. Um, so I hope you have uh, collected your, uh, uh, your questions and uh, please uh, uh, either use the chat or um, show your hand if you would uh, want to post your question or if you want to um, make a comment. Um, my um, kickoff question I think listening to you all is is what what terminology do we want to use and what do we want to recommend because we have heard at, at the European Union level and in Wales they are using more and more integrated impact assessments 
taking on board economic, social, uh, climate, sustainability, equity. Um, in we heard now in Spain it's health uh, impact assessment and in Italy it's more health equity audits which seem to be a bit more um, bit more flexible and um, and we also can talk about health equity impact assessment and you know uh, the question is also do we need to to clarify and do we need to say okay let's go for this or is it best that every country works with the methods they think works best because maybe a, an equity audit or something that is looser or more easier done will get done while well, if we make it super complicated uh, with integrated impact assessment then maybe it's more difficult for some countries I don't know but that that's a question that I had which would be helpful to to get your views on that because that's helpful for, for our recommendations in Jahi. So that's a question that I have. So I would like to go back to the to the speakers to to see what uh, what your um, suggestion is on that on the terminology. And um, the second question is I have is that potentially this is a lot of work, no? And also when I listen to Bert on the European Union level and Wales, I mean we it's quite time consuming, collecting lots of information. Um, I, I was clear from Rosanna that you are allocating actually some funds uh, towards it because you can imagine that people need to have the capacity and we listen when we heard from Italy the capacity building that is needed. Um, what are your recommendations or what is your observations in terms of the, you know, the feasibility um, of this all? Um, in terms of all of the work that's linked to it. Can I go back uh, to Bert uh, maybe um, to reflect a bit on these questions and then uh, I will ask every presenter to make an observation and in the meantime I'm waiting for comments from colleagues. Just let me know and click the item, the, 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 the icon with the hand. Yeah, maybe first to Bert. Thanks Moitz, I already see you want to make a comment too. Bert, I me. used to, yeah. There. Oh, there you are. <laughs> um, on on the question on the terminology, um, I, I I rather would 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 frame it differently. Um, one should uh, use the tool or the instrument that fits the purpose. Um, and it may well be that on on a regional or or, or municipal level, uh, audits are are a better fit. And when I when you tell me an audit, that sounds a little bit more like a monitoring type of of uh, exercise, whereas an impact assessment is is very different. That's an ex ante analysis of what could happen. So. Um, of, of something new, a new initiative. So there are, these are two different things. Um, and also on the role of, of your service, um, I, I guess as, as the Commission comes up with a proposal, I cannot just only focus on, on health, but it has to take all stakeholders and all dimensions into account. Um, when you as a community uh, focused on social, uh, no, not social health equity, um, then obviously your, your, your interest is maybe or your your uh, field of work is, is slightly more focused so um, and then on the second thing um, it's it's a lot of work uh, I, I do think impact assessments are, are, are a lot of work um, they tend to be rather big I mean the core document is, is, is not that big it's 50 pages or so but it, they tend to have a lot of annexes technical annexes uh, very often um, they, they tend to have supporting studies and, and, and so on. Um, there's no on, on how many people do you need? It all depends on yeah, what file are we talking about? Uh, I, I think it's clear when we in, in, in about a few, well, in three weeks time, um, we, you will have uh, the chance to read the impact assessments of the fit for 55 that looks to 55 emission reduction across the economy. Well, that's a slightly different uh, exercise. Uh, these are 12 impact assessments, by the way, but it's a slightly different exercise than a more focused uh, impact assessment in one specific area. Um, on, on, on capacity building, I think it's important to engage with the, with, uh, the right experts, consultants, but also to have to, to invest as an organization on a long term 
on, on capacity if, if it involves, uh, involves scenarios, foresight, uh, modeling or so, it's not the one-off thing. So that takes time be before you get these things done. Uh, you need also very good planning. You need to anticipate what is coming in in two or three years in order to, to, to be sure that you can react. Thank you, uh, Bert. Um, if any of the other speakers would want to come in on these points. If not, mm. I will move to. OK, so I have uh, Giuseppe first, then Rosanna, and then I move to Moitza. Giuseppe. Yes, thank you. I, I, I'd like to 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 make a, a, a preliminary distinction between the, the uh, two different uh, uh, circumstances where where we can apply this. Uh, this point. In, in fact, uh, uh, Bert has already uh, underlined the, the, the need to uh, identify specific condition where you are applying these methods uh, ex ante, uh, which is uh, for, for, for predicting something that is happening in some important uh, selected important initiative of investment in changes, uh, structural, environmental or organizational and so on. Which, which is the usual uh, setting where, where, where the, the health impact assessment is applied. Uh, and in, in this case, uh, uh, oh, oh, the, 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 his uh, comments are absolutely central and it's important also to select priorities because you have to put a lot of investment in making this exercise of health equity impact and considering the holistic approach, of course, health, health is one of the social aspects of this impact that should be included. While in JAI we are uh, also considering this, this, this specific uh, uh, um, uh, circumstances of application of the health impact assessment, but we are more concerned in, in the concept of uh, equity lens. That is, uh, is like is like wearing the lens. It's not just uh, one time for a, one specific circumstances to apply the health impact assessment, but it's it's uh, to learn to um, even not wearing the, the equity lens, but uh, making a refractive surgery with eczema laser to have the lens of equity uh, permanently uh, inserted in our eyes. Because this is what we want. We want to uh, to, to to all the the, the the people that is uh, that is concerned and responsible for any decision uh, to to be able every day to check if uh, uh, the consequences of his decisions are influencing unequally health. And this is uh, right, as you, you mentioned at the beginning, this is exactly the moment to do it because uh, in fact the pandemic as introduced uh, and uh, uh, in the, in the, uh, at large in the culture of, of, uh, of people and of, of course of the decision making, the, 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 the need of balancing the benefit and the risks uh, in terms of health, because health is usually was not there. It was not one of the criteria used to, to, to make this balance. And, uh, and even in the case of environment that Bert was reminding, I remember I, I am an observatory of health at the regional level. I have been involved a lot of time in health impact assessment of environmental initiatives. But it was mostly, it was a lot of paper uh, just to produce statistics on mortality in this region, in this area, and things like this, but nothing of really important. Now it's different because because else was just, uh, you know, it, it was due by law, uh, 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 an inclusion of uh, health indicators, but it's not, it was not really considered in, in the health impact assessment uh, uh, in general. Now it's different because, in fact, the, 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 the culture uh, has changed because the, the, the pandemic has, has uh, uh, made available to everybody the evidence that uh, your decision are strictly justified by a rationale of the health risk and the consequences of your decision on lockdown or not lockdown, vaccination and so on. So that, this is, has changed really a lot and, and I think that we, we, we can uh, either um, 
uh, invest more in this healthy equity impact assessment, uh, both exempt, as you were mentioning, and in the in the context of, of this uh, 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 dissemination of culture at the municipal level, like in Spain, or in the prevention preventive program, like in Italy, or or at, at large in, in the investment, like in Wales. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, so sorry for being so. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm just trying to get to what you're trying to say. So the equity lens, yes, we all want to have the equity lens there. But the question is whether the uh, arguing for a health impact assessment or integrated impact assessments is the right vehicle in order to make sure that policymakers are indeed taking the equity lens on board. I mean, that that is what we're trying to do here. Or are there other ways or um you see and i think that's what we are trying to do here um i had well rosana wanted to respond briefly and then i really want to go to moitza and then i have katie rosana um well um really uh, i think uh, i totally agree with Giuseppe in the and I, I, it was what i want to say also that equity is the most important aspect that we have to be sure that was included in the health impact assessment uh, could be integrated or no, or, or, or health equity impact assessment on health. No? Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, for me, it's more important that the impact was on health because uh, you can have as, uh, impacts on work, on uh, environment, or whatever you want, but uh, uh, all these kind of things are determinants of health. And for the people, for for the population, by my opinion, is that it's more understable uh, if you are speaking about health. Uh, what's happened on my health if you, we build a, a road in the middle of the city uh, and uh, for me uh, i think uh, this could be uh, interesting in order to different kind of language for example in spain uh, for us will be difficult to say audit because audit is like like you are going to see how they are doing things and the people don't like this uh, the people, the municipalities don't like uh, the, and that's why we never use this this word audit, no. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, could be in Italia. It's difficult because in Italia could be good word, uh, good um, word to do this. And th there are cultural aspects that is possible that are doing the the names are different yes indeed <laughs> thanks uh, rosana and also uh, by reminding us that health is a tangible topic that relates to citizens while equity may require further explanation indeed it's a bit more difficult concept for people to grasp uh, Moitza. Thank you so much first for really excellent presentations. Um, and before I forget, I would like to ask uh, and comment, I would like to ask Bert because I really like your presentation. It was very clear and uh, very, very informative. I'm just wondering how we from the member states are actively engaging into all these mechanisms, how that is linked, what the commission is doing with what is done at the national levels. So if there is any interlink, if we can benefit from those mutual processes, because it's, it's obviously we are trying to do something nationally and Commission is really working hard as you have so nicely presented here. So so how, how to link that to be more effective? That That's my question to you. But I would like to comment on, uh, on Caroline's question because um, to me it was quite obvious that in all three cases which were presented, there was legislation, there is health impact assessment and health equity impact assessment behind its uh, whole of government uh, somehow uh, obligation that uh, that uh, activities are implemented it's obvious that they're implementing challenges and uh, everyone is addressing them in each uh, in, in individual ways but also um, what I can share here from to, to your question how to integrate and if this integration uh, helps uh, uh, 
take it on board by policy decision makers better. I can say that uh, in Slovenia, within the work package nine uh, in Jahi, we have uh, implemented a case study where we uh, tried to show how you can move from uh, reporting on health inequalities to more health equity um, view on um, this whole question. And um, what we did, we created um, the multi-sectoral and multidisciplinary platform, in fact, three, no, three uh, core and additional two national institutes supporting, each of the institutes is supporting one of the sectors. And we have been working the institutes together. We have really um, <laughs> been challenged by building um, the common, the joint multidisciplinary competence. It means that we were really understanding what are the definitions if you're coming from um, economic sector, from social sector, from health sector, uh, what are different methodologies? And that was really enriching the whole process a lot. And um, uh, we have then employed the, the Rio 2011 WHO declaration, moving us towards this policy studying, I would say, in impacts on health inequalities. And um, uh, we produced case studies for each of three sectors and we worked with the um, steering committee, like the policy decision makers steering committee. All the time we met with them and while we were producing the cases on the policies where they were competent to implement, you know, they were able to somehow um, comment on that, what we were doing, whether we are going in the right direction, whether there is the policy reality, whether do, we do understand all the strategic developments uh, properly, it, it was really a very nice interaction, not just among the national institutes, but also with the sectors. So what is the lessons learned from our exercise is that um, if there you have um, the impact assessment within the silos of public health, it really you, you can re you can to some extent explore um, the, the, the um, individual policy or maybe more complex policies, uh, also from health equity point of view. Uh, but um, you can also communicate it with your own sector, but you can hardly communicate it as good as the institutes embedded in the individual sectors with the other sectors. So when you're communicating it jointly to the sectors, then the sectors also easier um, work together. And we, we have noticed that the integration here could be much uh, much better. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm happy to say that we, we will present that also during the Slovene presidency um, at the conference, which will be mid-July. And uh, yeah, we hope that it will be taken on board. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank, thanks, uh, Moitza. And that is also a bit of a plea for more the integrated impact assessment, because that will allow a, a better cooperation across sectors, while a health impact assessment, it may still result in health people fiddling with other sector impacts, but still with the risk that it remains within the health silo. Um, and the integrated impact assessment forces people to really to cooperate. As we have seen uh, in, in Wales, um, you had a specific question for Bert, uh, but maybe we first go to Caroline. Wales and then to Bert. Caroline, yeah? Caroline, may I just share with you uh, directly on that because we did the health impact assessment on food and agriculture policies in 2002 when the Slovenia was accessing country and we just wanted to see what would that cause also from the social, uh, uh, the equity perspective. And what we learned was that um, we work together, the agriculture and health experts, and this mutual understanding, even if we have been in driving seat, we were not able to do it without the knowledge from health, from agriculture sector. So definitely, yes, the health has to be in driving seat, but these connections are uh, to be built up. So I'm sorry, just to yeah. Add, yeah, yeah. No, very good, very good. Maybe Cathy, uh, because on the integrated impact assessment, and then we move to Bert about the, the, the link between the EU impact assessments and how member states can benefit and, and link better to that. Uh, Cathy. Yeah, I'm um, just coming back to your um, question really about uh, assessment versus audit. Uh, I yes. do think that um, they imply different levels of interrogation. So, um, it's certainly not a term we don't use equity audits in Wales, but I mean, others may and others may use those and have a very similar process. So I think it's really about, you know, perhaps the terms are interchangeable, um, but really it's about the process is important. And 
I guess the proportionate response. Um, not maybe not all decisions uh, will need that in-depth uh, impact assessment. You know, which again can be also off-putting for people because they think they don't have the technical expertise. So I think it's about explaining the process. Um, you know, what's uh, the standard practice? I also think it's about the training to support that to happen um, properly, uh, the training and the guidance, and access to more specialist uh, support. So we have a, a specialist unit in Wales that provides specialist support for health impact assessment. So um, it's ensuring that you've got those elements there to make it uh, happen effectively. Um, the other point really is around integrated impact assessment versus health impact assessment or health equity impact assessment. Um, I'm not necessarily advocating for the replacement of one or the other. Uh, I'm just saying that this is a, a tool being used in Welsh Government in, on integrated impact assessments to try and embed the strategic ambition of the legislation. And I think that tool effectively compiles all the various impact assessments that you know, when the policy owner sort of starts to investigate at a very early stage of the process, they can then link with those sort of specialist owners and go into more detail. So it's kind of, you know, it is a far more collaborative approach, but it doesn't mean either or. It means, you know, perhaps doing uh, both. You know, I think both have a place. Yes. Thanks a lot for your responses and um, I also think that uh, what is best to use by different countries depends so much on the specific situation of countries and what we have been using in Jahi that some countries do something, some do more and some do better. I think we can apply this also to this issue of equity lens, impact assessments, equity impact assessment audits and so on. Thank you. Uh, Bert, this question about uh, about linking to to the European impact assessments because because you do such great work, you have the GRC uh, behind you and so much, so many experts and and data and probably also more funds to do impact assessments in such detailed way. Uh, how can uh, countries benefit from that that knowledge? And um, because uh, the most of the the activities and legislations and laws will need to be applied in member states. So so how do they learn from your impact assessments in order for them to take those that on board and in, in their their implementation of the European laws? Well, that's a very um... A very broad question and a very pertinent question, um, and and there's no one single answer to that. I think there are very very uh, different channels how 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 the links with the Commission and the work on impact assessments and and then how how it links with with uh, the member state level or regional level. Um, first of all, uh, the impact assessments are, are are public; they are accessible as of the date of the, the adoption of the proposal by the Commission, and they are formally also sent to the Council, to the Member States, um, which is the basis of the political discussions. So that's that's definitely a first uh, way of, of, of communicating. Um, there's also within the Council workings, there's a Council working party uh, under the competitiveness uh, heading uh, that particularly focuses on bad regulation that actually discusses processes, say bad regulation processes at the Commission, at the Council, but then also uh, it gets uh, influenced by um, by national activities. And, 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 and now we are preparing, currently we are preparing actually the next presidency, which is, uh, which is Slovenia. So we are in contact with uh, the colleagues in Slovenia now uh, uh, working in this area. Um, Member states can feedback, give feedback. I mean, every initiative is published on the Have Your Say page, uh, asking with questions or just describing the the, the proposal. Uh, anyone is 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 invited to uh, to to give feedback. Citizens, uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, countries. Um, then um, impact assessment itself um, also increasingly, and if if time allows. Um, 
give member state numbers. So they try to not to just to analyze on EU level, but where relevant and in a proportionate way they give uh, specific uh, uh, impacts or, or angles for, for specific uh, member states or groups. I have to admit, oh, I have to say as well that it can be very sensitive. That's very often the most sensitive part of 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 an impact assessment, and and typically these numbers are are very much debated at the at the council and the parliament. So um, that's absolutely something we uh, we are very careful with during the preparation phase. Um, there are targeted consultations, and then as a last element, um, well. Um, Definitely more from a scientific view or for a technical view point, there are lots of working groups, committees where, where national institutes are, are being part of um, across different areas. Sometimes also uh, impact assessments, well, very often impact assessments rely on consultants. They are not always con commercial consultants. They are also uh, universities, they are national institutes, uh, they are global institutes like IASA and so on. So that's also, let, let's say, a last way of linking member states with, with the, the impact mm -hmm. assessments uh, process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Bert, for that. Um, so this is the last round for your questions. So if you have a burning question or a comment you would like to make, please uh, raise your hand, uh, ideally virtually, because I can see it here. And if not, switch on your camera and wave at me. Um, so Ingrid, if you have a question also, please go ahead. Yeah, a question also for Barrett, but maybe the other speakers. I think, um, as you know, participants of the equity action, we're very, very focused on equity and health equity, which is very much because we're focusing on social determinants. Health is an outcome um, and health equity is an outcome, but it's really the social determinants too that uh, affect that. Um, how, to what extent have you seen, you know, the, the high level European policy is, for example, a fair green deal and a fair digital transition. To what extent has that fair influenced your work? And do you see any um, uh, trends, evolutions into what to, to that the extent of the the social impacts assessments? Then that that that's being um, highlighted or taken into account more by the different stakeholders. Um, I think that's yeah. Uh, so we you know uh, Giuseppe mentioned a cultural change. Do you, you know, are, because we're in health and in this field, are we maybe a bit blinded by our interests in this? Or do you feel there is a broader, you know, has the pandemic changed things and to what extent, I guess, is the question. Thank you. Bert? Yeah, I, I thank you for the question. I think it's a, it's a, another very relevant question. Um, um, I, I, I don't think we should we should focus too much on the COVID, or at least it's way too early to, <laughs> to see the long term impacts of, of COVID on, on the impact assessments, um, at least on the social dimension of it. Um, but what I have seen, and I, I have a background in, 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 in climate analysis, so bring more the technical aspect of the analysis. What I've seen in the very early days, and I'm talking 15 years ago, or so we, we basically looked at the GDP effect. And then gradually these, these, the capacity, and we talked about capacity, capacity and, and methods have, have and, 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 and we got accustomed to it, have looked at burdens across sectors. This came quite early. And then burns across member states. So I just mentioned it in, for the previous question. And actually, since the long-term strategy, what came there, um, the long-term strategy that actually set the, the carbon neutrality in 2050, uh, three years, two, three years ago, um, what came out there very prominently was a just transition. And that was um, probably the very first time or one of the first times that, that the social dimension in this area was so prominent. Um, and this actually was accompanied also by, by methods. And the, but the but methods is, is that the difficulty there, there are constraints on data and, and, and on proportionality. Um, it's it's nice to say we have to look into that. I think everybody agrees, but do we have data? Because uh, equity and, and, and equalities, it, there are hundreds of, of ways of being unequal. And, and, and do, all, do the data reflect that? And if you have the data, what do you do with it? I mean, one thing is to have data. Another thing is to how do you project that into the future and, and, and give, give a real interpretation to that? So there are some 
practical consequences there. Mm. But in, in general, you see that that fairness is mainstreamed increasingly. Mm -hmm. Thanks uh, for for that uh, for those hopeful words uh, uh, and but also to mention one of the limitations or challenges is indeed data as Giuseppe start, uh, said at the start no data no problem <laughs> so the data is an issue and we we had a list of other uh, issues uh, as well as challenges for impact assessments it's like the, the political will and uh, capacity and is this not just going to be a tick box exercise and how should it take up and whether we will have real policy change but time is uh, uh, is against us so we only have five minutes left so uh, I would like to give the floor to Ingrid and Giuseppe to make some concluding statements uh, as a result of this very interesting uh, debate that we've had. And on the agenda, it says Ingrid first and then Giuseppe second. Ingrid, very short. Just some outcomes of this discussion. Uh, and um, and of course, it's been a very rich discussion, but I do think that then some, some things clarified um, and some uh, open questions also, but we started by saying, you know, this is really about recommendations. Uh, we're nearing the end of the joint action and what are will be our um, some of our final recommendations. And of course, as Gazeppe laid out at the very start, it's really about how do we um, uh, encourage more of a use of this equity lens um, uh, across policy areas. And this is we're really talking from the perspective of the health. It's we're the health sector trying to put health equity on the agenda, which of course, uh, you know, we're as we've heard through these discussions, we're one of the actors trying to influence a wide range of other actors. So I think we've heard about this, the the duality, you know, the whole of government approach. How can we get equity um, in that whole of government approach? So we do have it now. We've just heard in terms of a fair and just transition. How do we now operationalize that? And I think we have the two ways, you know, trying to get that health inequalities approach influencing the broader strategies and and practical approaches um, to to be one of the voices and raise the consciousness of. Uh, as we feel and know by being part of this joint action, more equitable societies are better for everyone. But uh, and also from the health sector approach, and we've heard that from the you know we had the first two presentations more about the that whole government strategies, but also the strategies coming from the health side and trying to approach health impact assessment from um, uh, through through head of health programs and essentially trying to do the same thing at a more local level. Um, where there can also be a lot of impact and, and those two um, need to work together. But I think the, the constant uh, a theme that I really picked up is the having to work with other sectors. And as Morshka said, speaking the language, because otherwise we won't have that impact when we're trying to really and, and trying to find that that common dialogue and, uh, and really getting maybe out of our comfort zones there. But then that will give us the most uh, impact in both kind of <laughs> assessments. So um, so from that perspective, I think it's it's been very interesting um, in terms of also the questions that we had following, you know, developing the policy, uh, this um, policy brief that focused so much only strongly on health impact assessment, but uh, it almost feels a bit limited now. So the implications for yeah. that of these discussions on that we'll, we'll consider as how to revise that slightly. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Ingrid. Uh, Giuseppe? Oh, you have to unmute, please. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, thank you. I, I think that we can confirm the, 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 the premise that I was using at the beginning. It's, uh, our final recommendation is uh, introduce a health equity lens whenever and wherever possible. And even ex ante and ex post uh, in, in, in important investment, even in, in a good day, everyday practice. Uh, but uh, we, we know that, uh, that that we have a support of, uh, of this uh, uh, framework and uh, on the capacities and competencies and investment that the, the, the European law and uh, all the infrastructure that has been described by Bert uh, could uh, could apply in, in our case. And, um, and we, we, which is the case in many, in many in many circumstances is not easy to do it, but, but sometimes it's even easier. But we have also these important initiatives that has been described that have been described today by by Spain, by Italy, and uh, and by other colleagues. Uh, 
uh, that could uh, help us uh, to 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 put in practice this uh, this activity. And uh, 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 of course, we have also underlined that there is a limitation in data availability, which is more important from the ex post point of view evaluation, which in the case of ex ante evaluation is is less important the availability of data because it's the data are already in the literature and the evidence that is used for making uh, impact assessment. Uh, uh, be, be, before before initiating because before taking an, a decision, uh, so we we are in fact uh, in a condition to, to 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 provide strong recommendation in this case, and we hope that the the colleagues in Slovenia can can uh, can give a, a, a scene to to launch this this uh, this, uh, this final recommendation in the next six months uh, for for your presidency. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Giuseppe, and thanks uh, to you all for uh, for being here uh, and to contribute to the discussions. And I particularly would like to thank our speakers, uh, Bert, uh, Cathy, uh, Stefania, and uh, Rosana, uh, as well as Giuseppe and Ingrid, and Vania, also our colleague, for having organised uh, this uh, this event. And uh, as Ingrid said, uh, the, we will use uh, all of this input to further improve uh, and elaborate on the policy brief that uh, we already drafted and sent to you. If you have specific comments, please do get back to us uh, by email. Uh, these are always welcome. Uh, but uh, thanks to you all. And uh, I would like to wish you a very nice day as well. And thanks, David and Moitza for your comments. <laughs> Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Ciao. Bye. Bye, Cathy. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Goodbye. Bye, Sylvia.